This is the Montec Hyperflow Digital, a 360mm AIO cooler with a digital display, ARGB lighting and black or white colour options. In this video we'll take a look at the design, ease of installation and test how it performs in terms of thermals and noise. So if you're considering this cooler for your next build, here's everything you need to know before making the decision. So this is the Montec Hyperflow Digital, it's available in two different sizes, you can get it in a 240mm radiator version or a 360 which is the one that we'll be having to test. You can also get it in either black or white colour options in both the 360 and 240 millimeter sizes. You can pick these up now from Scan in the UK. The 240 is priced at 75 pounds, either black or white, and the 360, that's under 100 pounds currently from Scan. And again, it's the same price whether you buy it in the black or white version. Hyperflow Digital features an integrated seven segment digital display that shows real time CPU and GPU temperature, E28 ARGB performance fans with 800 to 2200 RPM PWM speed range. It's equipped with a slim 27 millimeter thick high density radiator available in 240 and 360 millimeter form factors and wide socket compatibility Intel and AMD pre-installed fans and thermal paste for easier installation plus a six year warranty. So this supports a really wide range of CPUs a lot of AIO coolers now just support the most modern Intel and AMD desktop platform so Intel LGA 1700 1851 and AMD AM4 AM5. This supports all Intel sockets back to 11.5x, plus it supports AM3, AM4, and AM5 on AMD side. It's the same base hardware, so the radiator, the tubing, and the pump, CPU block, etc., as the original Hyperflow ARGB and the Montec Hyperflow Silent coolers, but it is equipped with the new digital display and these E28 ARGB fans. It's an aluminium radiator with a dense 20 fins per inch fin stack, 12 waterways, standard 27 millimeter slimline thickness. It's coated in very smooth and satin finish coating. It looks high quality, it's a nice finish. I like the look of that. And on the radiator, you have got the Montec logo on either side. So there's not too much branding on, but you do know it is a Montec cooler. At the radiator end, the tubing is fixed in position and it has some chrome trims where it is pressed onto, the tubing's pressed onto the radiator fittings. In terms of tubing length, it's 400 millimeters long. It's EPDM rubber tubing and it's covered with a premium looking braided sleeve in it. It is very tight to the tubing, so unlike some that does get some kinks in it, it's nice and tight, looks pretty good this. And you can see it's very flexible EPDM rubber, so it'll be easy to maneuver the CPU block in position when you've got the radiator installed inside your case. The CPU block comes with the Intel bracket pre-installed and it's got this plastic cover over it to protect the pre-applied thermal compound. It's a copper microscived cold plate. As I say, Intel bracket comes pre-installed and it just slides off quite easily. So it's easy to remove the Intel bracket and install the AMD bracket if you're using it on AMD. It is quite a compact CPU block not too tall, quite like these more compact designs. The dimensions of the CPU block are 67.2 by 67.2 by 52.3 millimeters. Radiator dimensions are 397 by 120 by 27 millimeters. The pump is PWM controlled. It has a speed range up to 3,100 RPM. At the CPU block side, the tubing enters the pump housing on rotary 90 degree fitting. So if you need to maneuver the tubing and position the tube in a certain direction. You've got plenty of movement on those. There's a lot of movement on those rotary fittings. On top of the CPU block, behind this really dark tinted plastic cover is the digital display. It's a very basic digital display, but it is only quite a cheap cooler. It's very basic. It just shows CPU and GPU temperature. That's it. It's controlled by Montec's own software. The only option is to switch between CPU or GPU temperature. You can also show it in either Celsius or Fahrenheit, but it is very basic. There's no option to put a custom image or GIF or have the weather or a clock or anything like that on here. It is just for CPU and GPU temperature readout. In terms of the fans, these are Montex E28 
ARGB fan E28, 28mm thickness, 120 by 120 mm fans, with a PWM speed range of 800 to 2200 RPM, maximum airflow of 96.27 cubic feet per minute, maximum air pressure of 4.13 mm H2O, and a maximum noise output of 36.25 decibels. They are equipped with opaque blades, they illuminate with ARGB lighting once the cooler is powered up. Wiring is pretty neat on the fans because the daisy chained, and then on the end, the connect up to an extension which goes to just two standard four pin pwm and three pin five volt argb headers so they connect directly to motherboard headers and it's same at the pump side so it's a standard four pin pwm header for speed control and then a three pin five volt argb connection one's male one's female you can connect the fans to the male end and then connect up the female end to a motherboard header also at the pump, you get a USB header connection. So it's a standard USB to motherboard header connection. And that's needed to power up the digital display. If you're looking for a new chair, then definitely go and check out boolies.co.uk. They offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colors. In terms of accessories included with the cooler, you get the copy of the installation manual and user guide. You also get all the installation hardware needed for installing on either Intel or AMD platforms. So you get a couple of Intel backplates, upper mounting brackets for Intel and AMD desktop platforms, several different standoffs for Intel installation, standoffs for installation on AMD AM3, AM4, AM5, a bag of mounting screws for the radiator and spring loaded screws for installing the CPU block. You also get, as well as the pre-applied thermal compound, you do get a small tube of thermal compound, a spreading tool and a template, which is good because if you ever need to upgrade your CPU or for any reason, remove the cooler and reinstall it, you get some spare thermal compound there, which is useful. There's also a couple of clips for the tubing, so just to neaten up the tubing once it's installed and a tool for tightening up the standoffs. So I've not gone into great detail on the features and specifications because as I say, the base hardware is more or less the same as the Hyperflow ARGB and the Hyperflow Silent, which we've covered both of those in in-depth reviews previously. But I do want to look at the installation process quickly. And obviously we need to take a look at the thermal performance of this new digital version. Our test system uses an ASRock Phantom Gaming X870E Nova Wi-Fi motherboard and an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X CPU. So I'll quickly run you through the installation process on AM5. First, remove the Intel upper mounting bracket from the Hyperflow digital CPU block and slide the AMD bracket in place. Now remove the stock AMD plastic CPU cooler retention brackets from the motherboard as these are not required for the installation. Then screw the the AMD specific Montec standoffs to the stock AMD backplate. There's a special tightening tool included for final tightening. And since the cooler comes with thermal compound pre-applied, there's no need to add any to the CPU IHS. Now lower the CPU block over the CPU aligned with the CPU IHS and standoffs. Tighten the CPU block in place using the provided spring-loaded thumb screws, tightening each screw in a cross pattern evenly and progressively for optimal contact. To connect the wiring, first connect the PWM cable from the fans to a motherboard PWM header usually labeled CPU underscore fan. Then connect the pump power cable to another PWM header usually labeled AIO pump or CPU OPT. Then daisy chain the fan ARGB cable to the pump ARGB cable and connect the other female end to a motherboard three pin five volt ARGB header. Finally connect the USB cable from the pump to a USB 2 motherboard header to power the LCD screen. And once you have the radiator mounted in the case, that's the installation complete. So I've used the black version for installation and testing. I don't expect any significant difference in performance between the black and white version. So you can take the results from the black one and assume that they are going to be the same, if not similar with the white version. Installation as a whole is really simple. It uses all standard motherboard connections, so there's no additional 
RGB or fan hubs to install. You do have to install the Montec software, but it's quite clever once it detects that the cooler's been installed, it sends you to the correct page to download that. It's a very small piece of software, but you do have to have it installed for the digital display to work. The screen itself, it's okay, it's very basic in its function. It's also quite dim. I don't know whether it's because the tint on the plastic cover on top is really dark, but it's quite dim. Also, the RGB lighting effects on the pump, they're also quite dim. But the installation process is really quick and simple. Even a novice should get this installed really quickly without any fuss. So now the cooler's installed in the test system, let's take a look at the thermal performance and noise output. If you prefer to see this review in written format, head over to kitguru.net where there will be a full written review for the Montec Hyperflow Digital. We'll start by looking at noise output as this will give us a good indication of performance based on noise. The 360 millimeter Hyperflow Digital is very loud at maximum fan speed. A recorded maximum noise output of 57 decibels puts it right down at the bottom of our charts. It would be very distracting to to use at this noise level. So work will need to be done tuning the fan curve to get the balance between noise and performance that suits you. There's good performance from the Hyperflow Digital at maximum fan speed though, with an average recorded CPU temperature of 59 degrees Celsius, which means it's up with some of the top performing coolers in this test. But it's much louder at max fan speed than some other coolers with similar performance, such as the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro 420 and the Be Quiet Light Loop 360. Dropping fan speed to hit the 40 decibel noise limit requires a reduction of almost 50% PWM duty cycle, which means the fan speed is just over 1100 RPM. This has a significant effect on thermal performance, dropping the average to 64 degrees C, but it's still on par with other budget AIOs from the likes of Deepcool and will still provide enough cooling grunt for a powerful CPU like the 9950X. In the PBO test, the CPU frequency is automatically adjusted based on a target temperature, so the temperature delta between coolers is close. It's the clock multiplier that's the important metric here. Since the PBO test runs at max fan speed, the Hyperflow Digital does well here with an average clock multiplier of 52.5 while cooling 255 watts package power, which equals the performance of some larger 420 millimeter coolers, but again, it's extremely loud compared with some. So it really is a bit of a mixed bag, this cooler. It is for a digital display equipped cooler. It is quite cheap at under a hundred pounds for the 360 millimeter version. You can get it in the two different color schemes so it will suit either black or white builds. In terms of the build quality and finish and the looks of it, it looks good. Build quality is high. I do have some reservations about the display though. It is really dim for some reason. I prefer it to be a bit brighter, a bit easier to see what's actually on the display. It is quite difficult to see whether you're looking at the CPU or GPU temperature and the RGB lighting effects on the CPU block. They're also quite dim. And I think it's all because of how heavily tinted that plastic top cover is. The actual function of the digital display it is very basic. So if you're thinking you're gonna be able to get this and customize it to how you want it looking to match your system or to run some custom video or some custom image on there, it's not what this is about. It is just about displaying CPU and GPU temperature only, which is reflected in the price, I guess. It is very loud at maximum fan speed. The fans run up to 2,200 RPM, which isn't overly fast. There's plenty of coolers out there that run up to those kinds of speeds, but this is very loud at 57 decibels. So it's worth bearing in mind that if you are thinking of buying this, you probably have to do some work in tuning the fan speed so you get the balance between speed and performance that you want from it. However, installation is really quick and simple. It uses only standard motherboard headers. There's no additional hubs to install. The software is really quick and easy to download and install, and it's really simple to use. It's not difficult at all to install. Even a novice will find this really easy to install. And the thermal performance, it's okay for a budget cooler. It's absolutely fine. At max fan speed, it's pretty good. It's up there with some of the top coolers, but it will be really distracting, I wouldn't imagine anybody could use it running at maximum fan speed all the time it's not really suitable for that but if you do tune the fan speed down to around about 40 decibels it's still up there it's the same kind of performance you'd expect from a decent 360 millimeter unit so i've no real issues with the performance it's able to keep the 9950x cool there's no overheating issues or anything like that 
So in terms of performance, it's okay. And it's good value for money. There's not many AIO CPU coolers out there with a digital display for under a hundred pounds. And build quality is good. It's up there with some of the top coolers. So that's the Montec Hyperflow Digital. Let me know what you think of this cooler in the YouTube comment section. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to KitGuru if you've not already done so. And if you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you wanna help support us, you can always head over to our store and pick up some merch or even subscribe to our Patreon. We're also on TikTok. And if you want to check out all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.